Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the uh, Minolta CLE camera. It's a camera that came out in 1980. It's a rangefinder camera. It's the fruit of a collaboration with Leica. Uh, they had an agreement in 1972 uh, and that finally arrived with the Leica CL, uh, which has basically the same body. Um, we'll talk about it in another video. Uh, so the Minolta CLE had a different electronics and a mechanical shutter that was based on, on a reflex camera. They had uh, Minolta uh, CG. And basically this camera offered TTL flash exposure and, uh, and on the film uh, measurements, um, as we can see here on, on, a, on a pattern on, on the... Yep, the shutter mechanism. Um, so a very precise um, camera in, in that sense, which uh, made it uh, made its uh, pseudo of a super M7 for for some some people because it's a, a great exposure, a very compact, very small camera that uh, gets really great results. Um, on the viewfinder, on the on this viewfinder, as it's a rangefinder, there were three. Uh, markings, one for the 28 2.8, which was one of the standard lenses. There was a, the famous 50mm um, 2.0 that was made um, with uh, Leica in collaboration. Um, and there was a 90mm f4, uh, quite compact. Um, these were the three major um, lenses designed to work with it. But you could, of course, put anything else, but you wouldn't have the, the small um, uh, indications of the frame lines. Uh, but yeah, let's see the results. First, with, uh, first using Color 400 Kodak film that's in Reykjavik uh, for, at Nautosvik, as a bass, outside bass. Um, this camera is really super precise and it's auto exposition mode. Uh, I probably haven't missed one shot in terms of, of the technical aspects of, of exposition. Um, here with, uh, with this uh, relatively high contrast, medium to high contrast scene on the left, uh, everything's super well exposed. Same thing on the right. That's that's really the, the main thing with this camera. It's, it's probably the most compact uh, M lens format uh, camera, uh, rangefinder camera. It was a joint uh, development at first. Uh, it's the same uh, body as the Leica CL, but it's, it's had uh, its electronic really being implemented in a different way. Um, so again, two scenes using the Kodak Color 400. As you can see in the very high contrast picture on the left, even the details uh, which would probably be underexposed otherwise uh, under the leaves have been well uh, calculated. Um, so yeah, resistance of this camera to complex scenes, we'll see a little bit after. Um, always uh, spot on. And that's, that's definitely linked to this technology where the camera measures the light on the film uh, to be m more precise in its exposure time. Um, here with um, black and white film across Neopan 100 with this glow effect linked to the infrared uh, part of the spectrum uh, on the film. Um, not a special of those kinds of films, but as we can see here again, high contrast situations, uh, everything is really, you've got the most detail you can get with the film you have. So really very precise. Um, that's going to be the, the main thing about this camera. It's super nice to use, very easy and fast to focus and manage. Uh, the user experience is great and it works uh, even in subtle um, compositions like uh, on those two pictures where there's lots of details in different parts of the picture. The, again, exposition is going to be great easy to focus, but that's the rangefinder in itself. So that's nothing really unusual for this kind of camera. But going back to color with Kodak, Kodak Color 400, that's again Iceland Reykjavik. Those high contrast situations with some parts of the picture being less exposed. Still, it, the, the camera um, 
goes uh, at best as it can do with uh, the specifics of your film. Um, here going with some black and white Lomography Berlin film, 400 ISO, that's in Los Angeles and in, in Hollywood, actually. Uh, that two good examples of very contrasting situations where, yeah, it's optimized, uh, the exposure is really optimized uh, and in, in this automatic mode to get the most details from low lights and highlights. So great, great cameras. That's that's really its main, very compact, very precise. Uh, here uh, with a film which is very sensitive to over or under exposure, that's Ferrania P30. It's a 550 ISO film. Uh, yeah, uh, nothing to say. It's it's really an interesting camera because it, I haven't got any experience with the uh, Lake M7, but it's supposed to be kind of just close uh, in its operation. But yeah, even with this film, the Ferrania, which is, has more silver content than other films, so very its chemistry is really sensitive, you will not have to worry about auto exposure. It's I don't think I've missed one shot since I've had this camera, and it's been a few years. I think it's my only camera where I really have that strong of a result in, in that sense. So, yeah, interesting. On this camera, there's not much to uh, to do. There's not so many buttons. There's an on-off button here. Basically, um, turn it on, uh, turn it off, or go for self-timer going upwards. Um, otherwise, up here we have this, well, obviously, the rewind uh, lever. And then we have um, the manual dial to set the speed with the B-speed too. And when you're on automatic, it locks in and you have to press here. It's a security, it's pretty neat. Um, and yeah, that's about it. If you pull on the ring here, you can select the ISO. But that's basically the whole thing and works great. <laughs> 